chatted to a parent the other day, a chap, I don't know, probably in his 40s, could be young 40s, you know, and um, friendly enough, and he works in a duck uh, abattoir. Didn't know there was such a thing. I think it's the only one in New Zealand. Um, it takes the ducks from, I think it's, I got the impression, like half a dozen farms, and um, handles 25,000 ducks a week. They kill in their plant, their abattoir. 25,000 ducks per week. The ducks live a total of six weeks to maturity. Well, to slaughter. So, on the, whatever it is, half a dozen farms, there's six times 25, 150,000 ducks. So I, I said to him, don't get me wrong, I didn't tell him off in any way. I, I just said to him, uh, so that would be, um, are they kept in batteries? Oh no, he says, um, they're in, and I think what he meant was barns. Um, but obviously intensely close together, aren't they? And not in, not in sunlight, if indeed it's daylight. I suspect it is daylight. I mean, I didn't allow my mind to think on what he was saying, and I, I certainly didn't want to, in any sense, criticize his livelihood, because he's a dad, family man, loving and caring for his kids. This world's a nightmare, Father. I can't and don't want to comprehend the scale on which we as a mankind are killing all day long, every day. It's wonderful in the sense that at least part of the Western world has embraced no longer having battery chickens, but of course they're kept in a are simply appalling conditions. And not if you're a, not if you're one of the people doing it, apparently you think it's not unreasonable, but I find it absolutely abominable. There are no words that can, that give justice to its injustice, that can com comprehend the nightmare that we are by association part of in this civilization as we call it. Of course, I could say, nature, everything's dying in, in the end. You know, the sweet little birds you hear singing, they don't live many years. They all die. And they all die badly, if you like. Dying's not, not a lovely business perhaps in pain, perhaps in fright, I, and I can't put my mind to it, I won't whatsoever's good and lovely think on these things. So I think on the goodness of God and the goodness of heaven, and the wonderful life to come, the heavenly host. And I'm lifted by such.
and I try to accept that God has found this is the only way of anchoring us in in the heavenly host forever. And perhaps it's all a dream, a nightmare in some ways, yes. But for most of us, oh, I don't know if that's even true, but for some of us it's, it's not too bad a dream much of the time. There's a lot to be thankful for, and we are. But our sight, our vision, our mind, our goal is on heaven. Heavenly Father, may we learn so quickly and not have to stay in the school any longer than is needed. for your beautiful company forever in heaven. Just love you, Father. Just love you. Thank you, Dad. My soul longs for you. My soul longs for you. Nothing else will do. My soul longs for you, Heavenly Father, in the company of all those that love you. Just going to thank you, Dad, not in understanding, but in longing for you. All I know is my soul longs for you. Thank you, Dad. Well, I'm in tears, of course. I am so upset. I am so upset. Love you, Father. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, love. My love. Thank you, my love. I'm going to tuck you up and you're going to go to sleep. And one day, love, you'll wake up in heaven. And not only will we all be there together, but so will Gran and Granddad. <laughs> and Elliot's and Auntie. And your pets. Yes, all of them, love. It wouldn't be heaven without them, would it? Now, God bless. Thank you, Dad. Now listen to me and listen carefully. You can wreck your life here by fearing the worst. Or you can turn it into... Well, much joy by thinking the best. Choose you this day whom you will serve.